the problems that the rally has had with one Boston press representative who has been a thorn in the side ever since we started these rallies because he pays no attention to strict facts and has done his best to uh, downgrade the rally from the very start. He poses as being an expert on extremist organizations, and uh, he may be. I uh, know he's fully qualified to speak about some of them from uh, personal association and membership and probably support. But uh, as I have pointed out over and over again, many of us do not consider that the rally is entitled or properly described as an extremist organization because uh, we do nothing by extremes except trying to get extremely well-informed people to come and talk to you about some of these problems. And uh, just to put it briefly, as I do frequently when I have a chance with the press, in politics to me there are two extremes in philosophy. One is anarchy and the other is totalitarianism. Those of us who run the rally and practically everybody who comes to the rally believes in constitutional government which believes in a certain amount of government, but a limited amount, and therefore we would seem to be strictly in the middle of uh, political philosophy, and certainly not extreme in either direction. The same way when it comes to political action, there are those people who believe the proper thing to do is to get your gun, go out and start shooting. And there are other people who think that the proper thing to do is to sit back, sit on their hands, and let other people the professionals or whoever run politics. And those, to me, are the two extremes in political action. And as far as the rally is concerned, we encourage all our attendants, and we think most of our organization are preaching a doctrine of being active, intelligent citizens, which means taking active part in politics, not sitting on your hands, but doing it in the constitutional way, which precludes violence. So there again, we're right in the center of everything. And uh, so for uh, this, uh, I can't really say gentlemen of the press, it, it sort of sticks, but uh, this so-called representative of the press insists that we are one of the extremist organizations. He was on the air this afternoon on a program for almost an hour in which he put out a, uh, I can't give you statistics because uh, we haven't kept that close track of how many lies have appeared in each one of his broadcasts. So I don't know whether this afternoon he was above his average or whether he kept within it. But for one thing, he <laughs> did say that he had come here as the representative of the Washington Post and he had been denied a press pass. Uh, the truth of the matter is that he appeared and said that he was representing the Post, waved a letter but did not show the contents of the envelope to anybody, and he was told by John McKinney, with my approval, uh, that he could not have a press pass, that he was not welcome as a representative of the press. Last year, we informed all the Boston newspapers, all the Boston radio and TV stations, that Mr. So-and-so would not be uh, accepted as a representative at the rally. And uh, the, by some very fancy footwork, he secured a letter from one of the editors in Boston, and uh, we declined to honor it. And uh, this year, he apparently had to go to Washington uh, to get anybody to say that he could come as their representative. Well, there was quite a contretemps on the radio. Among other things, he made the remark, according to the people who were listening to the program, that of all the sponsors on the uh, list uh, that we have on our program, all those who are residents of Boston or the Boston area are members of the John Birch Society. Uh, one of our sponsors, who is not a member of the John Birch Society, immediately called the station and suggested that Mr. So-and-so uh, would be expected to retract that statement and correct his error of fact before the program was over. It led to quite a conversation with the leader of the program who felt the gentleman concerned should actually take the time himself to go to the radio station and confront Mr. and tell him but the, and enter into an argument with him. Well, it's not a subject on which there's any argument. Mr. Hall had been lying again. 
he'd been caught out and was trying to get out of it. And uh, so uh, after some more discussion in which the, finally the manager of the station came on the air and uh, more or less apologized to the gentleman and uh, said he was sorry that he didn't like the way the program manager had handled the program. And uh, so a few minutes ago, I had a personal call from this gentleman who insisted that he was coming to the rally, that he now not only had his press credentials, which are among the finest in the world, so he says, uh, from the Washington Post, but he has also been commissioned by station WEEI to cover the rally for the rest of the year, uh, weekend. I told him that was very interesting, but he still would not be given a press pass, that he was not welcome as a representative of anybody. If he, in the press world, if he came, he could come as an individual, pay his five dollars, and come in. And I hope that he would uh, know what he was up against, because we have two or three of our strong rally supporters who are just itching for an opportunity for what is now known as a confrontation, but uh, which we, but which we officially seriously hope will not occur. Uh, however great uh, we might contemplate the prospect, uh, how with a, how much, I, or rather I say regardless of how great our appreciation of such a project might be. And uh, so if he turns up, I hope that uh, all of you, if he approaches you, will give him the silent treatment. His name is Mr. Gordon Hall. And uh, he's a very smooth looking object uh, with blonde curly hair, a very suave manner, and uh, the honesty of a snake. And I am quite willing to speak frankly about the gentleman. I have refused steadfastly over the years to appear on any radio or TV program with him. The basis for that, I have stated to the various program managers, is because I consider it a complete waste of time for me if not for the station, to put on a program in which one of the participants is known to be a professional liar. And on one occasion here, Mr. Hall tackled me and accused me of having made that a remark over the air. I said I certainly had. And uh, I said, Gordon, you lie about a lot of things. And I know you lie. You know you lie, and you know that I know that you lie. I also know that on many occasions when you're speaking, you get paid for it. Now, if that isn't your definition of a professional liar, I'd like to know what it is. And so please cooperate with the police tonight and give him the silent treatment and a non-physical silence. And uh, because he insisted he is coming and that he will cover the rest of the rally both for WEEI and the Washington Post. So I can assure you that if you see articles in the Post about the rally signed by Mr. Hall, or if you hear him on WEEI, you will know just how much credence to give to what he's saying. Because he said this afternoon that the attendance of the rally this year had dropped below 200. And uh, he uh, is completely careless. I won't, no, I'm doing him credit by saying careless. He's completely dishonest about anything connected with the rally. And uh, once in a while he gets some facts uh, correct, but it's uh, there again. I think that's uh, carelessness on his part. <laughs> so much for a rather unpleasant subject, and my apologies for taking your time with it. But I do think it's important for you people to realize that we do have an outspoken, uh, thoroughly nasty enemy who tries desperately to get in, find somebody who will say something that he can distort into a criticism of the rally or not necessarily that, but some extreme statement about uh, people that he likes and reverences, which he can use 
for adverse purposes. Uh, I also want to say that uh, you all have our program, so you have a pretty clear idea of what's going on. And there are a number of things which are added to the program from time to time. We keep a supply of these additional notices at our information booth. That is not the registration booth on the main floor, but the, uh, the information booth at the end of this right-hand corridor around the mezzanine floor. And uh, we always have somebody there, and there are always a supply of these added notices. So please keep in touch with that particular corner of the exhibition area if you want to know about additional things. Uh, one of the things, and you will find these things announced at various booths too, such as Liberty Lobby special program at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, I believe, or is it 10? 9 o'clock. And uh, Colonel Dahl is here and uh, Dr. Andrews and, uh, and Carol Dunn, who is uh, going to describe their recent trip to Rhodesia. Uh, we have tried over the years to have adequate representation here from Rhodesia, but do you know the policy of our government? And it's uh, been impossible so far for any adequate representation out of Salisbury to get a passport visa to come to this country. Some of them can't even get a passport because the only way they can get it is to get a British passport because the, so far the State Department, I believe, does not recognize a Rhodesian passport. And uh, so we have to rely on information from our good friends who go from here to Rhodesia and sometimes are subjected to a considerable amount of harassment and almost persecution because of their interest in that country. And uh, it is tragic because there is one of the few countries that is squarely on our side in just about every possible way and with whom we should have thoroughly cordial and complete relations. But we have uh, this uh, stupid policy which has been sponsored by the UN and the British and uh, we have to pay the price. So I urge you, if you have a chance, to hear Miss Dunn and find out a little bit more about that very interesting country. And uh, I have already taken too much time, so I will turn you over now uh, for the first part of our evening program.